So first off, I wanted to express my gratitude to the TEDx committee and everyone involved in organizing this event. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this special day. And a big thanks to all of you who have joined us in person and online. My name is Sarah Blythe, and I'm a founder and executive director of the Overdose Prevention Society. Our organization was established in 2016 in a response to the increasing number of overdoses in Vancouver's downtown east side, which is also known as Canada's poorest urban postal code. While running a market for homeless people in the downtown east side, we often had people rushing to our site, having overdosed on the streets or alleys around us. We quickly realized that we needed to be organized and prepared, so we set up a tent with Narcan and a few chairs to offer immediate assistance. Initially, we faced resistance. We were asked not to set up the site, but we couldn't stand by and watch people die. Eventually, our health minister at the time woke up at four in the morning. He realized what we were doing was the right thing to do, the importance of our work, and began supporting us. Today, our overdose prevention site receives about 400 to 600 visits a day and offers a range of wraparound services, including housing support, wound care, access to detox and recovery, job training, and community support. We also employ and train people from the community, including drug users and former drug users. At a recent staff meeting, we were deeply affected by the news of one of our peers who had lived experience and had helped save many lives, had passed away alone at home. This tragic event led us to question how we could better support people living alone and prevent similar tragedies. One solution that emerged was the use of technology, and even basic tools like FaceTime or WhatsApp can provide crucial support. One app, for example, allows users to press a button before and after using drugs. If they don't press it again, an alarm goes off, and if necessary, emergency services are dispatched based on GPS tracking. This app has already saved many lives. Our overdose prevention site is equipped with internet access and a phone booth, one of the last of its kind. While many people still get their news from newspapers, it's critical for homeless individuals to access up-to-date information. Whether it's about extreme weather or urgent community needs, timely information can be life-saving. Take Smokey. This is Smokey. This is Smokey here. Um, a legendary graffiti artist in the downtown east side, his murals serve as public service announcements providing crucial updates about the overdose crisis, missing persons, and other local information. He's essentially known as the downtown east side newspaper, and work, his work illustrates the power of sharing information creatively. Understanding the impact of the internet, I took on a challenge to experience life without it for 24 hours. This exercise made it clear how integral the internet is for many. I also asked people in the downtown east side what it would be like if they had internet for 24 hours. What would they do? Their response was they would fill out job applications, housing applications, medical appointments, staying connected with their loved ones and more. For people in the downtown east side, having internet access would not only help them share their stories and connect with others, but it would also open up the door for opportunities for education, employment, and personal growth. It would allow them to stay informed, connect with family, and have access to vital resources. In 2010, Vancouver developed Van Wi-Fi. It covers off some parts of the city, but not the downtown east side. There are several ways for cities to improve internet access, government requirements of social housing and SROs to provide internet. All government buildings should have internet. There is also an opportunity for businesses to donate bandwidth to surrounding areas. Internet providers can also create partnerships that discount internet for government and low-income people. It's crucial to address gaps and extend coverage to un underserved areas. 
While internet access might not be officially recognized as a human right, it undeniably connects people to their basic needs and rights, such as food, housing, and safety. Access to the internet can transform lives. It can save seniors by enabling them to call for help through devices like Alexa and support single parents in social housing by providing opportunities for their children to interact and learn online. If we expand internet access in the downtown east side or ever other impoverished areas globally, we could elevate communities, offer new opportunities, and build healthier, more connected societies. The internet can give marginalized people a voice, improve their well-being, and help them thrive. The outcome is people connected, people working. The internet is such an amazing place. It's an information highway. It's part of everyday life. It's essential to re reduce the poverty divide. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. <laughs>